All right, a little something different today. We're going to do a quick and simple install of the popular open source monitoring tool known as Uptime Kuma. We're going to get it installed today using Synology's Container Manager. Stick around. So what exactly is Uptime Kuma? It's built as a self-hosted monitoring tool that allows you to monitor websites, applications, and servers in real time. As you can see on the screen, here's an instance of it running on a DS920 Plus in Container Manager. Let me show you how easy this was to get up and running. All right, so the first step is to get Container Manager installed on your NAS if it's not already installed. So come up to the Package Center, come to the search bar and search for Container. You can see here it pops up. Now, I already have it installed on this NAS, but if it wasn't installed, instead of saying open, this would say install. Just simply click the install button and follow the steps in the easy to follow wizard. All right, so now that we have Container Manager installed on the NAS, one of the nice things about Container Manager over the previous Docker installation was that you could now create projects by bringing in Docker Compose files. So we're going to jump out to uptime.kuma.pet. We're going to click on the green docs button and we're going to grab a sample Docker Compose file. So come over to the right side here and click on how to install. And then we're going to scroll down until we see Docker Compose. And we're going to grab this example Docker Compose template. Just come over here and highlight all of this and copy this. Now that we have that copied, let's jump back over to our Synology NAS and let's come over and launch Container Manager. Now I already have a couple of containers on this device. If I come under Project, you'll already see an installed instance of Uptime Kuma, but the status is that it's stopped, it is not running. I'm going to go ahead and create a new project and I'm going to name it Uptime Kuma Test. And that's only because I already have an instance installed on this NAS. Now we need to set a path. So before we set the path here, we need to come over to the file station. And you'll see once you install Container Manager, it installs a Docker folder. In that Docker folder, we need to create two more folders. Now again, disregard this Uptime Kuma folder here. This is for my actual production instance. But we're going to come up and create a folder and I'm going to call this Uptime Kuma Test so that it's different. And now I'm going to go inside the Uptime Kuma Test folder and I'm going to create another folder called Data. And what we're doing here is we're just going to map these folders that we're creating on the file station over to the data folders inside the container. Okay, so now we have our two folders created. Let's jump back over to the wizard and under path, we're going to set the path. Under Docker, we're going to select the Uptime Kuma test folder that we created. And again, you could name that simply Uptime Kuma. The only reason I named it Uptime Kuma Test is because I already have an Uptime Kuma folder going for my live production instance. I'm going to go ahead and click the test folder. And now that we have set our path under source where it says upload Docker Compose, we're going to click the drop down menu. We're going to come to create Docker Compose. And here we're going to paste in the code that we grabbed from the example Docker Compose template. Okay, now that we have that in there, we have to make a few changes. The first change we have to make is to map the folders. So we're going to change everything from the left of this colon to match the folders that we created in File Station. So we're going to come back over to File Station. I'm going to go into my Uptime Kuma test folder and I'm going to right click on my data folder, go to Properties, and I'm going to highlight this and copy this. Now we'll go back over to our code and we're just going to paste in the path that we just copied. All right, so now we have our volume and our path and our folders mapped correctly. I'm going to leave the ports set to 3001. That's fine because my other instance isn't running at this point. But if you have something else on your network that's using port 3001, you might want to change the port number here. But for this example, we're fine. I'm going to leave it set to always restart, but I have to make one other change. 
I have to change the name and you don't have to do this. Again, the only reason I have to do this is because I already have a container named Uptime Kuma in my production instance. So I'm going to just add Uptime Kuma test. And now everything else could be left the same. We're going to go ahead and click on next. We don't need to set the web portal settings. We can just click next. And here's a summary of everything we've done. And down here, it says start the project once it's created. We're going to leave that enabled. And we're going to go ahead and say done. And you can see now it's creating behind the scenes. It's starting the container. And it says it was successfully started. So we're going to close this. And you can see here, Uptime Kuma is successfully created. All right, congratulations. So now that you have Uptime Kuma successfully installed inside of Container Manager, we're going to show you how to access it now, which is really super simple. All you have to do is point your web browser to the IP address of your Synology NAS, colon, that port number, which in this case, for this demo, we use 3001. So let me switch over to the computer and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so here you can see I have my IP address pointed to the port number 3001, and it brings me to the Uptime Kuma web interface page. The first thing you're going to be prompted to do is create a username and a password. So for this demo, I'm going to keep it super simple. I'm going to create the username Tony Demo, and again, the password is going to be very simple 12345678. And we'll go ahead and click create. And there we go. Okay, so now you can see we are at the Uptime Kuma dashboard page. So let's go ahead and add our first monitor. In this case, for example, let's say I wanted to monitor my Synology DS216 plus 2. Let's come over to the green Add New Monitor button. Let's click Add New Monitor. And we have a bunch of different monitor types. If we click the drop down menu, you can see all the different monitor types. For this example, we'll keep it simple. We'll just set a ping monitor. We can give it a friendly name. So I'll call it DS216. And then for the host name, I'm just going to put in the IP address of the DS216 plus 2. The heartbeat interval, the retries, the heartbeat retry interval, all this could be left the same. And we're just going to come down and we're going to click on save. And you can see it says here it was added successfully. And at this point, you can continue now to add all your network resources that you would like to monitor just by simply repeating the process and adding new monitors here. So what are your thoughts on this free open source monitoring tool? Are you using Uptime Kuma already? If so, let me know down in the comments below. For more content like this, please click the video on the screen. Thank you so much for watching.